All systems go in orbit for the crew aboard the shuttle Columbia. Astronauts have been conducting experiments all week, making up for lost ground following the mission in April, which was cut short due to a defective generator. For details on just what's been accomplished so far and what's to come in the week ahead before Columbia Cups comes back down to Earth, we go far above Earth this morning to the shuttle, where we're joined by mission specialists Michael Gernhardt and Roger Crutch. They join us from inside the space laboratory. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us this morning. Good morning. It's nice to be with you. Roger Crouch, uh, you got about a week to go left in the mission. You, uh, it's the first reflight in history. How is the mission going? Well, it seems to be going pretty well. We've got a, lot, a few little problems that we're working on, but uh, overall I think everything's working real well, getting some real exciting science results, and we're all real pleased about it. You're studying in some of your experiments the behavior of fire in the absence of gravity. How are you conducting that experiment, and what do you hope the results will show you? Well, we're conducting several experiments of that type, and most of them are in a self-contained, uh, sort of a, a real safe environment so that none of the fire or fuel could get out and cause a problem. They're relatively small fires. Some of them are just a little droplet of fire hanging on a wire so that we're looking at that. What we hope to learn from that is a better way to make, have more efficient fires on Earth so that we can cut down on pollution and through efficiency save a lot of fuel. Michael, because this is the first reflight in history, what were you able to learn back in April that's being applied to the mission now? What did we learn? Well, actually, uh, as you point out, this is the first reflight in, in history and uh, it's the fastest turnaround in shuttle history and the f fastest turnaround of any uh, astronaut crew. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us because uh, we trained for a year for the first mission and then we had a chance to do a, a dress rehearsal under fairly demanding circumstances with the fuel cell power down. And from that, we really fine-tuned all of the salient points of space flight and, and this mission has been really smooth. Uh, Roger could talk to the science. We actually learned some things on the science that helped us change things and optimize uh, this particular mission based on the past one. Michael Full, I understand, by ham radio. What's it like buzzing by seeing neighbors in space up there? Yeah, we talked to Mike uh, the other day, and uh, at certain points in our or orbit, we're able to see the Mirror Space Station. It looks like a very, very bright star, maybe uh, two or three times as bright as Venus looks from up here. And with binoculars, you can actually see the shape of the of the space station. Uh, it was great talking to Mike. He sounded really good, and, and uh, things seem to be progressing uh, pretty much uh, the way they want to on board. They just got a new... Uh, supply of food and, and uh, spare parts and so forth, so uh, the concept was it was Christmas on Mira with all that new stuff there. Question for Dr. Gernhard. We've taken a look into your background. It, it includes extensive experience in deep sea diving and oceanography. We're wondering if you see any similarities between your work on the ocean floor and in outer space. Well, they're actually very similar in a number of different ways. Uh, one is that they're both an, an operational environment where you really can't uh, breathe and work in the, in the atmosphere without some type of life support system or, or shelter. And uh, uh, on my first mission, I did a spacewalk, and that was very analogous uh, mentally to doing the deep sea commercial diving work that I did. And then the other thing that's real common is just working as a team with a with a group of people. Uh, we had to do that uh, in the offshore diving business, and it's it's critical uh, of critical importance that you be able to work as a team in a shuttle mission because the shuttle is so complex that that no one person can do it by themselves. And so, you know, that that kind of teamwork uh, translates very well into space operations. Roger, you mentioned your age a little bit earlier. Also this week we heard that former astronaut John Glenn said he would like to fly again, even at age 75, and NASA is said to be seriously considering the idea. When you think about that, he is 20 years your senior. Think back 20 years now for me. Is your body going to be able to withstand that, do you think, going up there, learning a little bit more about what we can do in space at a more advanced age? Oh, yeah, I think what a lot of times... Uh chemistry of the body changes as we get older, but I think that a person like uh, Senator Glenn is in a, keeps himself in good shape. I'd be glad to go along with him as his junior brother, sort of in, brother in arms or whatever, 
and then go again when I'm 75. That'd be kind of a cool trip, I think, and then we could compare my data and his. We saw also, as we were setting up for the interview, I believe you had a teddy bear strapped to your knee. Uh, what's that all about, sir? Uh, sometimes NASA lets you put, do things that keep you in touch with your family, and I'm, that's just a little bear that's been in my family, between myself and my fiance and my kids for several years, and I take it on travel with me a lot, and this is just a trip that I thought would be real nice to bring it along with me, and NASA let me do that. Isn't that nice? He sleeps with it, too. <laughs> we won't go there. It'll keep... There's the tool. You can see it's a um, Phillips end on a long ratchet wrench with the Phillips, not standard Phillips number two from the ISM kit. Copy. Columbia, Houston, can you confirm the, uh, perhaps point to them, the, uh, the places where the screws are binding? Copy, the third from the right. And that's the fourth one down from on the right side. And also the fourth one down on the left side. Okay, those are the ones we copied. Understand, Mike, and we're asking IFM if they want to uh, get you to uh, position the camera for any particular view, so stand by. Okay. Okay, Mark, uh, forward on R4 Yankee, moving aft, and this is the top of the panel. And we have not uh, attempted to do the top fasteners yet because that was uh, not where we were in this sequence. Okay, now I'm on the far aft side or the right side as you face the panel and going down. You see the corner fastener is still in because we haven't torqued that yet. The number two fastener is loose. Uh, the number three, I believe, is, is stuck. And there's the number four. And the bottom, the G connector, or fastener rather. Okay, we're moving along from aft to forward. And we had a, a, the uh, third from forward on the bottom here was, was stuck like the others, and we managed to get that one out with the tool that we showed you previously. Okay, now we're forward and moving up in the vertical. And we're back to the uh, starting point. And Columbia, Mike, uh, that was excellent. We really appreciate that. That gives us a good idea of what the situation is, and uh, we'll uh, try to come up with some words for you on that. The other, the other thought that we have, and we're not sure this will work, is the uh, possibility of, I know I can get the, uh, the J13 connector from the access panel here, and we're wondering that we could probably get the J18 if we removed the uh, J17 connector first with a connector tool. Uh, so that's a, that's a path that we could try if you guys think that makes sense. Okay, we copy. We'll uh, we'll add that to our thinking.
95 PSI on both of them. Is that what you want, or you want something a little higher? Ninety-five is fine, and uh, CM1 says it looks good on the ground here. Copy that. Okay, this is test point zero seven alpha opening valve Sierra Bravo zero seven now. Copy. Copy that. Greg, we're very happy with that burn. Yeah, I got a special favor to ask Alan. If uh, the CM1 team knows ahead of time that they're going to want me to do a different procedure than's in the procedure book, if, I, if they could tell me ahead of time, then I can be sure to do it the way they want from the beginning, rather than having to uh, mess up the first few seconds of the uh, experiment. Columbia, Houston, Jim, we're with you there on the flight deck. Okay, great. You can see Susan is uh, is exercising. We try to get in, and uh, we have an hour scheduled for exercise. Of course, only about 30 minutes of that is actually on the bike. The only other 30 minutes is spent getting ready, and then afterwards cleaning up and changing back into the work clothes. So we've got a little video here that uh, Greg made explaining some of the combustion processes back in the lab. So what I'm going to do is uh, give you a mid-deck down link and start the tape. We copy. One of the experiments on our mission is the combustion module one. It's a rack designed for multiple experiments, and one of the experiments in it right now is called the laminar soot processes experiment. The purpose of this experiment is to study soot formation in microgravity. The investigator, the principal investigator on this project, Professor Jerry Faith at the University of Michigan, is one of the preeminent soot researchers in the world today, and he believes that by studying soot formation in microgravity, we can learn important insights about soot formation in many important practical devices here on Earth. Soot formation involves the growth of a solid particulate water from gaseous material, and it's indicated here by this model. The soot aggregate is made up of a very large number of much smaller primary particles. Primary particle joins to the soot aggregate and the soot aggregate grows. By studying this process in microgravity, we can learn much about the soot formation process. Well, that's it. We had a successful day working uh, glove box experiments for combustion. Uh, Dom was busy with that all day and had a really successful day, so we felt like uh, chalk another one up for STS-94. Not every 